Hello and welcome to a new video that is actually not about my homebrew spectrum analyzer project. In case you subscribe my channel because of that project, let me just quickly tell you that the original intent of the channel was to make general discussions about electronics and circuitry and equipment and things like that. And I, I still do that every now and then, it's just uh, that the uh, Spectrum Analyzer project takes up a lot of my time, so recently I haven't had any time for for uh, other content. Even in case you subscribed uh, the channel um, because you're interested in the Spectrum Analyzer project only, you might just as well skip this video because um, it's not going to be very interesting for you. Anyway, so what's going on here? Why do I have to rig all uh, DP832 power supplies on my bench? Uh, let me tell you what happened. Uh, in uh, summer of this year, 2014, uh, I um, watched uh, a few videos made uh, by Dave Jones on the EEV blog in which he uh, reviewed and um, showed a teardown of uh, this rival DP832 power supply. And uh, he discovered uh, a, a bit of a problem in the process that was related to a heatsink being too small and uh, the unit rebooting um, under some circumstances. And he also discovered another problem that was uh, related to that because this device does, uh, does a, a low a low side uh, power or current measurement actually and if you have the precision option there is a bit of an issue there and you have to do your measurement in a particular way but anyway so he discovered a bunch of issues and then people in the forum really had a very close look at the unit and um, apart from these two issues um, I thought that the unit was uh, was really nice both in terms of uh, features as well as in terms of quality and I also decided that, um, or thought that, if people had looked that closely at the unit, um, it was a, a pretty safe um, buy because you 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 would know exactly what you'd buy. Uh, you would know about the issues that had been discovered already, and uh, could arguably safely assume that there wouldn't be any further issues. So anyway, so I uh, ordered one of these, and um, this got delivered, I believe, like in in August two thousand and fourteen. Um, and remember that uh, Dave Jones uh, discovered the issue um, much much earlier, so so that was all after that. Um, and um, when I got the, the the this unit, I started playing around with it a little bit, and I discovered a bit of a problem. Um, so let me let me demonstrate uh, that problem first, and then we'll talk uh, uh, about it uh, for a bit. So as you can see here, I have uh, a multimeter connected to channel number two of the unit. Um, and I have channel number two set to constant current. And I'm supplying a constant current of nine milliamps. I uh, hope you can read that here. Yeah, nine milliamps over here. So I turn on channel number two uh, and I can see a read back of 10 milliamps. Um, so it's supposed to be nine, but uh, um, I don't have enough resolution, so 10 milliamps, that's, that's great. And in fact, the multimeter is also showing uh, 9 milliamps here. If I zoom out such that you can observe both devices, uh, if I turn up the current here, that's uh, 10 milliamps, 11 milliamps, 12, 13, so uh, 13, 14 actually already, so no problem there. This does exactly what it should do. Um, let me turn off channel number one and switch over to channel number um, That was channel number two and now I'm on channel number one here. And I'm going to do exactly the same um, Note here again that my set point is nine milliamps here. So uh, I'm pushing a constant current of Nine milliamps or actually I'm telling the unit to, to do that now. Um, let me turn on that channel now the first uh, thing that appears to be a bit weird here is that there is a current read back of 80 milliamps. That's not 8, but that's 80 milliamps. Um, which is a bit weird because it's supposed to be 9. Um, now uh, if you, uh, <laughs> this read back is not so precise, but anyway, um, uh, if you look at the multimeter which displays what is actually being pushed um, through the lines, it's it's 35 milliamps. So actually, this is off by 
around about 24 milliamps. If I turn up the current, I'm at 9 now, but if I set this to 10, you can read the, on the meter that it's pushing 36, I set it on 11, it's 37. So there is this constant offset of, of 24 milliamps and um, uh, you can also see that now uh, the, readback, um, the readback is fixed. Now it's showing 30, uh, 30 milliamps um, on, on the readback of the power supply 37 here. Um, so at least that's not 80 anymore, but there is still an issue because um, you, you don't even have to look at the spec sheet to figure out that this is completely out of calibration here. It's completely out of spec. It's supposed to be 11, but it's 37. And, um, and so that's not good anyway. Um, so um, how do I go from here? Um, let me tell you that when I received the unit, um, apart from playing around with it, I also had a look at the calibration certificate um, that was shipped with it. Um, and if you zoom into the calibration certificate here, you can see that um, the date of calibration is June 2013. So that is more than a year old. And, um, and I thought that was weird. I would have expected a, a, a current calibration here and uh, I asked on the EEB block forum whether that was normal or not because this has never happened to me before um, and uh, so the replies were, were fairly mixed. Um, some people said that this was fairly common and others said that this was completely unacceptable. So anyway, um, and in the process I promised to make this video, you know, showing uh, the issue and, and, and that's what you're watching right now. So anyway, so this calibration certificate is not only old, it's actually so old that because I'm supposed to recalibrate every year, I should immediately recalibrate before I start using um, the unit. So, um, and the only, um, this, cali this calibration certificate can only be used to show that it was good um, when it left the, the, um, the factory um, anyway. Um, and if you're wondering why this uh, sheet of paper looks so shoddy, this is because um, they ship it in a bag like that. <laughs> That is actually the new calibration certificate here that I haven't opened yet. Um, uh, so anyway, I don't really care, but if you just compare this, this is how Agilent is uh, shipping their calibration certificates in a very nice envelope and everything. And um, it's, it's kind of interesting to note that this is the calibration certificate of my scope that I bought um, more than a year ago. And uh, the calibration certificate of the Agilent scope is, is newer than um, the, um, the calibration certificate of the power supply um, that we're discussing here. So anyway, there is that. Um, now, um, before I continue to talk about what happened, let me just show you, um, let me show you this. If I go into the utility menu, and display system information, um, you can see the, um, the serial number here. Um, I, I'm just showing that in case you're, you know, you want to write it down or anything, uh, um, whatever. So here it is, and uh, the firmware version is 1.04. Um, and so that's uh, kind of um, some information I wanted to show. And furthermore, I can also query the uh, calibration date, which is more or less in line with uh, what is written on the calibration certificate. This is uh, June 2013. Anyway, so, um, so why is this weird? You know, um, apparently this unit, as far as I know, um, it was shipped either shipped back to China and then the board was swapped because of the um, th that heatsink issue or they sent new boards here and um, the, um, the boards were swapped um, at the dealer. Uh, I don't know anything about that but I, I know that um, this, this unit was modified and just if you look at the dates it's clear that um, it, the, the unit was manufactured before the issue was discovered and then they swapped boards um, but didn't bother um, to recalibrate, they didn't bother um, to, to flash a new firmware 
um, and they didn't bother to check whether the unit was still working. So um, we might argue, you know, whether they should have done that or not. But what is more interesting is um, how uh, the dealer reacted once I contacted them and, and um, told them about the problem. Um, now, the, the first thing they said is um, that um, if I want to ship back the unit and, and get my money back, um, I, I could do that um, without any problem, which is already nice because, um, you know, some, some dealers kind of, they leave you with faulty units and, and they claim that it's all working or was working when they delivered or whatever, um, but that problem did not exist. Furthermore, they offered to, um, to swap out the whole unit with a new one, which is why I have um, the, the one at the left here, which is a new unit. So um, obviously uh, I went for that and they also said that I could keep um, the one that was faulty. You know, it's not faulty. I mean, it's just uh, obviously this is not good. It's supposed to deliver the constant current that I set, but I can use it for constant voltage. And I've been using this happily since I got it for quite uh, a bit now. So anyway, they said I could keep it until I get the new unit. And once I get the new unit, um, I can return um, I can return the one that is faulty, which is what I'm doing. Um, and it's also the reason why uh, why this is quite improvised here, because I have to ship it back probably tonight. Um, and I wanted to make this comparison first. So um, I can assure you that I don't even have to show you um, this one works exactly the way it should. It works exactly the like, or let's actually do this real quick. Um, let's move the meter over here, plug it out. And plug it into channel number one here. Great. Let me remove that. Okay, and this is set to 9 milliamps. I turn it on and I'm reading 8.9, whatever. So this works. This works exactly the way it should, no problems whatsoever. Um, and um, just for the sake of completeness, um, the serial number here is this. I have to unplug my multimeter. Okay, so this is the serial number here, and you can see that this comes with a newer firmware. It's a one one point ten. So um, so this is really um, a, a recent unit. Um, you can also, if I check the calibration date, um, the calibration date is, uh, is uh, August 2014, uh, which is also in line uh, with what they have <laughs> on the shoddy new calibration certificate. So anyway, um, there is, by the way, I'm, I'm sure um, this is interesting actually, because I'm sure that it's hotter than 12 degrees C in my lab, but I'm also fairly confident that it is not yet um, uh, 38 degrees C. So anyway, <laughs> there is a bit of a problem with the temperature readback apparently here, but, um, but I don't mind that at all. I just hope that they're not using this for the fan control. Um, and anyway, so um, so the new one works. I'm going to ship back the old one. The only problem I had was um, it took quite a bit for the new one to arrive. Um, but the dealer was was very clear about this from the beginning. They said, um, you know, you can have a new one, keep the old one until you get the new one. But um, we're going to tell you right now that it's going to take a few months. And now it's mid. Is it? Not quite. It's the beginning of October 2014 and um, this whole issue happened in summer. So um, um, it, it, it took quite a bit, although that's not even their fault because they just didn't get uh, any unit from Rigol um, before that point. So anyway, so that's the whole story with the Rigol power supplies. Uh, I'm going to keep the new one. Uh, send back the old one. Hopefully not mix them up in the process and um, I hope uh, <laughs> that was at least mildly interesting. I thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or want to discuss anything, uh, please do so um, down below. And uh, see you next time.